Hey, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man. Speaker Shootout. Sunday Speaker Shootout. Very excited. I love Speaker Shootouts. They're my favorite. They're my favorite. That's where we throw three, four, five speakers into a pit. We throw a sack of flour down there and some chains, and maybe a broom handle, and see who comes out alive. The good news is, in this category, they're pretty much all winners. Okay, I've got my glasses on so I can read this without going like this because Gen X is getting a bit long in the tooth. I have, oh, here, let me do this. I have fancy books out so that I increase the production value and I have a whole bunch of lights on. And they're not like fancy, like film people lights. They're a bunch of old lamps I found in the attic and just put the most powerful light bulb I could in them. It's quite bright, actually. I have box full of sticks here to make things look fancier more professional where's my coffee hey there it is got my new coffee mug got on vacation how's this for a coffee mug anyway i actually did videos when i was on vacation uh for uh, my anniversary. That's probably gross if you heard that. Anyway, um, I got this down in Mexico. It's my Mexican coffee mug. I'll put this right here. Okay. We also have prize trophies that we're going to bestow on all these. So if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. What do we do here? We talk about high value audio products. We're not snobs here. We have a lot of fun. We talk about stuff that's affordable, achievable, and sounds great. And in, in many cases, sounds better than much more expensive alternatives. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the KEF Q150, okay? The Q Acoustics 3020. Not to be confused with the 3020i, but we'll talk about that. Emotiva B1 Plus, Air Motive B1 Plus. And, um, by pure accident, the ELAC Debut B 5.2. There's a theme. That theme is five and a quarter inch woofers, or five inch woofers anyway. Similar woofers. And the theme is 200 to $300 here. Okay? So... Grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's have a Sunday speaker shootout. Okay. I got to keep my eye on the time, too, because I don't want to go over and have the camera shut down. I also ensured that I plugged the uh, microphone into the actual microphone jack instead of the headphone jack, which I have been known to do. Um, and then it doesn't work out very well for me. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to put them right here. So I can read them. All right, let's talk about specs. Uh, it's Saturday morning here. Kids are going crazy. All right, uh, Q Acoustics. Uh, it is rated at 64 to 22 thousand hertz okay kef uh what are we at kef is 51 to 28 thousand hertz elac b 5.2 46 uh up to 35 thousand hertz and um the air motive b1 plus is 48 to 28 thousand hertz they're all 86 db except for the q's which are 88 db and then uh six and eight ohms they're they're i wouldn't say easy to drive but they can be driven off of most things probably more than 20 watt even 20 watts you probably get away with most things all right so what do we want to talk about oh the amp i used uh, on all of these to do the comparison is the emotiva ta 100. it's a 400 dollars integrated amp with a dac and a phono input and it's a great value mm.
Also, we just went above a thousand subscribers last night. Very humbled by that, and I appreciate it. We also have some Patreons. Very humbled uh, that y'all are um, donating to the channel to help me out. So, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank everybody that's watching this, even if you think I'm an idiot, because I have a tendency to be an idiot, stupid, babbling idiot. But, for whatever reason, some of y'all like to watch me, and I find I'm thankful for that, truly. So, let's get into it. All right, let's talk about soundstage. That's how wide the music seems, how tall it seems, how deep it seems. All right, soundstage on these. By the way, this is all unscripted i just have i don't even have notes i just have a um just have some things written down on a piece of paper like categories so soundstage <laughs> they okay first of all in this price category things really start to step up and like in the 200 100 to 200 dollar category there was like definite winners and losers in the sub 100 dollar category definite winners and losers in this category it gets very difficult i would say there's no losers um, these are all winners they just have a, a few differences between them the bottom line is i think if you buy any one of these speakers you can be incredibly happy um, there's no standout here but there are differences and if you know those differences then you might be able to get a speaker that is really good for you so Soundstage. Uh, soundstage um, probably goes to the KEF and the Q Acoustics, um, but they all soundstage well. The uh, Emotiva B1 Plus is very good lateral uh, soundstage and very good deep soundstage. The ELAC WB 5.2 is just a good all-rounder. Like there's nothing that stands out, but yet there's nothing that's bad about the soundstage. Um, the things that I saw on soundstage were the Elax um, did a very good job of going deep. The uh, Emotivas did a very job of going deep in an almost three-dimensional sort of way. It's almost like the music comes to you with the Emotivas. And it's kind of regardless of where you put them. It's something special. The cues um, are very much wider than the actual speaker which is a lot of fun the kefs i think the wind goes to the kefs simply because it did things that i had never heard a speaker do before specifically in every day uh, is the same by nine inch nails it was a visceral and emotional experience at the beginning of that song when there's a crescendo and it took over the room really took over the room I think even some of the other speakers actually do soundstage better laterally, but whatever reason, the Kefs had that kind of X factor, the magic factor, which I forgot to put on here. Hold on. X factor. Perfect. All right, imaging. Again, um, they all image well. I'd say the Emotiva is probably image the best, and it, I'm sure it has everything to do with the folded ribbon tweeter um, and that lateral soundstage. The lateral, it's a lateral kind of waveguide. You can see it kind of, well, if I move my hand, you can probably see it. It comes out at an angle. It doesn't do that on the top, but it comes out laterally. And again, it's not that these other speakers do it bad. It's just that I think the Emotiva um, Air Motive B1 Plus does it better. It's more defined. It's more definitive. And it is not necessarily dependent on placement or toe-in. It just does it well regardless. Uh, Elac, again, very consistent performer. Um, Q's, very good. Um, not quite as good as the... Um, not quite as good as the Emotiva. I'd say that the imaging on the calf is probably actually, out of the four, the the worst. And it's not in a bad way. It's because 
it does such a good job of overall soundstage that I think there's a bit of a compromise on imaging. And with the Kef, you're, it's a con concentrically mounted tweeter. So the good thing is it's a point source. So instead of having different levels of drivers having to, and then having to work that magic, it's all in the same. So it's coming at you in one point. You would think that would lend itself well to imaging, and while it does, the standout thing for the KEFs is just the amount of soundstage, if that makes sense. Again, none of these image poorly. Let's talk about bass. Bass on these was all surprisingly very well done. We have specs. And I got a question last night in the comments about specs. You know, why certain specs um, are a little bit different and why I always mention, you know, placement of a speaker is important for bass response. Um, the bottom line is companies actually do their low frequency specifications differently. Some companies will say typical in room. And what that means is they're actually taking into consideration the room gain, specifically on the back wall for their bass response, because you will get a lower um, frequency response when a speaker is closer to the wall, specifically when it's reported, even when it's front ported. And then some speakers, you know, they um, they do their testing um, and they take or try to take, you know, any room gain gain out of the equation um, some people like speaker builders will climb up on like a 20 foot ladder to do their measurements so that there's no type of reflections or, or gain associated with it the bottom line is even if a speaker says like okay so the elac says it goes down to 46 and the q say they go down to 64 it doesn't really matter. You have to listen to it. And even if a speaker says it goes down to 44, there's no guarantee that that's going to be a balanced sound signature. So if you turn it up to get that, you know, more of a bass response, that visceral experience, it could be bright as heck and it may, may not be enjoyable at all. Where as a more well-balanced speaker with a, let's say, lower or higher spec low end, can be more pleasing and actually feel like it has more bass. So bottom line is specs, I wouldn't say they're unimportant. I would say it gives you an idea. Also, just a little tip, if it's rear ported, you're gonna be able to affect the bass response more easily by how closely it is placed against a wall and the back wall and to a certain extent, the side walls as well. Front porting, um, is not as impacted as much unless you get it right up against the wall, like probably touching the wall. So anyway, I digress. Based on these, all excellent. Um, the standout, I would say the thickest, um, most buttery base is the Kef, followed by probably the Air Motive, uh, Emotiva Air Motive B1 Plus. It, um, I feel like it's not as accurate though. I feel like it's bumped in the bass, which is fine because it sounds good. Q's is clean, um, again, being well balanced though. So even at 64 hertz, this speaker sounds deeper than 64 because it's balanced, okay? ELAC is just very well done. That's gonna be a recurring theme for the ELAC. Even Steven, very well done. Front port, all the rest are rear port, okay? So you're gonna probably get the most consistent bass response out of the Elex, um, unless they're shoved up right against the wall. You'll be able to affect the other three more greatly by placement closer to the wall. But um, the Kef and the, the Air Motive B1 Plus, I have the most bass presence at a specific frequency, nah, for certain nah, frequency, SPL, SPL. They're thicker, a bit thicker. I'm not saying they're better, I'm just saying they're thicker. So if that's something you like, then 
again, no no bad performers here, but the Kef and the uh, Emotiva are probably what you, t what you want to take a look at. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range. Most detailed um, Emotiva and Q Acoustics. Um, most detailed Emotiva and uh, Qs. Did I just say that? I don't know. Most balanced Eli. Most rich Kef. They're all good. If you want absolute crystal clarity in your mid-range, look to the Emotiva. And then if you can't get the Emotiva, look to the Qs. Um, very clear, very well balanced, very um, leans you into the music. I mean, you can hear specific details that you've never heard before. I have reviews on all of these, but watch my review on the Emotiva. Okay, and it just the level of clarity. This is what I wish the Kef LS50 sounded like. Okay, if you're interested in the Kef LS50 and you don't want to pay fifteen hundred or twelve hundred dollars, and you want to get a hundred and ten percent of the performance simply because this has better bass, take a look at these. I always get down, I get unlike, or I don't like this, the thumbs down, when I when I badmouth the Kef Q, uh, LS50. People love that speaker. Not for me, though. All right, we're talking about mid-range. Uh, mid-range on the ELAC, very even, very nice, not as clear as the, the Qs and the, and the uh, Emotiva, but not at all unpleasing. Um, the one caveat to the mid-range on the Emotiva is at certain frequencies it becomes somewhat shouty at louder volumes and I'm talking 80 dB or higher near field low level listenings you're not going to hear it but it I heard it on Nora Jones and I also heard it on uh, the House of the Rising Sun by the animals uh, when he goes you know, really goes up and, and, and hits those high, higher notes for whatever reason that frequency it became from going being very pleasant to being right there just for that note, right? It wasn't like overall. It was just for that note, and then it pulled it back, okay? Uh, Kef, uh, the mid-range is going to be the smoothest, the probably the most... Hmm, it's, it's tilted to the low end, but in a very pleasant way. It's the buttery. It's most buttery. This is the most buttery speaker, the Kef Q150. What does buttery mean? It means it's a little bit smooth. It's nice. A um, little extra dash of richness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a speaker that is going to make digital and analytical amplifiers seem more analog. Okay? Smooth. The Kef is smooth. All right, we talked about the Kef. Q Acoustics, very well done. Um, more detail, especially in female vocals, especially in guitars, you know, when they move their hands on, or across the strings. Uh, Emotiva is ultra clear, very clear. Elax, just a very strong, even keeled performer. Okay. Let's talk about treble. Treble, um, as you could probably guess, is is going to go to the Emotiva with an asterisk. Um, and I think it has everything to do with the folded ribbon tweeter. Okay. Um, then the treble is going to go to the um, Q. Then the treble is going to go to the ELAC. And then the treble is going to go to the Kef. 
even though I just said the Kef is last amongst this group, that actually might be first for you if you like a bit of a warmer speaker. I don't think this speaker is warm per se. It's definitely not as rolled off on the top end as many other speakers I've heard. However, um, it gives a, the warmest presentation out of all the four of these. This is a good kind of speaker if you don't want to jump, you know, feet first into the deep end of warm speakers. This kind of leans you towards that without being too warm. So this may be the treble for you. And I'm not saying the treble isn't clear on this. It's there. It's just not as loud as or pronounced as um, these two, especially. Again, Elac, even Steven. Very, very well done across the board. Um, can get a bit bright at louder volumes. All these three can get a bit bright at louder volumes. Um, also, you can't really, you can reduce it a bit on the air motive simply by placement. Okay, so since it doesn't have great vertical off axis, if it's too bright for you, you could actually flip the speaker upside down. Uh, or you could, you know, lower it down so it's not right at ear height if you want to reduce that treble response. Um, towing it out straight into the room is not going to have that much of an effect simply because it's very good laterally. The Q is uh, good both laterally and horizontally as far as off-axis performance. Um, now, I didn't consider these overtly bright unless it's at uh, higher volumes. It gets a bit shoddy. Even Steven. Also has very good off-axis laterally and vertically. Um, but you can also mitigate and attenuate, attenuate is probably a better word, some of that treble response by putting the grills on. It's gonna reduce it a bit. And if you need it even more, put a piece of tissue paper on the grill and then put it on there. Oh my God, that's horrible. Yeah, not really. Headphone guys have been doing that for a long time. What are my final thoughts and the awards and the X factors? Again, what I said at the beginning of the video as to all of these being winners, they are all winners. Okay. These are all excellent speakers. Um, I didn't really talk about build quality. I think that calf probably gets the build quality. Um, the, uh, the Emotiva and the Qs um, are going to be whether or not you like that. They're they're definitely a departure from what I would call a traditional speaker that has the wood-ish looking speaker. Uh, the Elax are, you know, good looking. They have some, some grain and stuff. It looks good. These may be, you know, an acquired taste for you. But I would say don't let how they look affect if you buy the speaker. Because, man, these things are both awesome. This is to the point of being awesome is if you don't like the way this speaker looks, go buy a cheap speaker, cut the front and back baffles off, shove this in there, put some foam around it so it doesn't resonate, and then be happy with it. It's that good. All right, X Factor. What speaker has X Factor? The Kef has an X Factor. Um, and that X Factor has a lot, if not everything, to do with its warm-ish presentation and its ability to feel the room in unpredictable ways that's going to cause one to be like whoa i've never heard that before x factor on the emotiva has to do with clarity into the music and also an ability to bring the music closer to you to the point where you feel like you're looking into it even though you don't look into music but that's an analogy It's outstanding. If you can get by some of the more bright presentation at louder volumes, and you can get past that single amount of resonance that pops up every now and again. Is it a deal breaker for me? No, it's not. These are, are, are part of the collection, the curated speaker collection that stays at the cheap audio man's house, much to the chagrin of my wife cool thing about bookshelves though is that you can stack them up 
you can get like three bookshelves to the, take the same amount of space that one tower would take. So you have a closet, you can stack them up, throw a jacket over them, and then uh, take them out when you're ready. The Q's, their X factor has to do with clarity as well, but it also has to do, I think, just with balance. I think this is probably the most, these two are the most accurate balanced speakers up here. This one has a bump, a uh, little bit of a bump on the low end. This one has a little bit of the top end rolled down a bit, okay? So the X factor on the, on the Elax is the fact that they don't have an X factor and they are completely balanced across the board. X factor for the Elac is also that it's $200, actually $199. And if I would have had this speaker for the best speaker under $200 shootout, it would have mopped the floor and not by a little bit, by a lot, a bit. I believe this is the best speaker people can buy for $200 or less. Absolutely. I'm well, stand by that. I almost didn't even get this. I almost never heard it. Except Amazon sent me the wrong speaker. And incidentally, it's Bigger Brothers out in the uh, hallway. Just delivered this morning. Uh, okay, so X Factor is this is even Steven. This is the kid in high school that you resent because he does everything right. Or she does everything right. Does everything right. Okay. Winners, they're all winners, but we are gonna bestow some awards, okay? The monkey award, which go, which is what I give to the speaker that's looking out at all the other speakers that are better than him, isn't gonna be uh, bestowed today. Why? Because they're all winners. <laughs> we have some skulls. Oh uh, boy, I call this the rock and roll skull. It's going to the Emotiva. And I'm not just saying this speaker is good for rock and roll. It's good for all sorts of things. But with that thick bumped bass a little bit and the absolute clarity and crystalline nature of the mid-range and top end, this thing is awesome. This is what I wish the Kef LS50 sounded like, okay? Incredible, incredible speaker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Little blue skull. Blue is cooler. So I'm gonna put it right there. Q acoustics. Not as. Well, not as, I would call this a less wild version of this. Sorry, camera shut off on me. We almost made it though. We almost made it. We almost, I want to give the ending away. Almost made it. All right. So just talked about the uh, Q acoustics being slightly warmer, slightly more well behaved than the Air Motive B1 Plus. Red Skull goes to the ELAC. Why? I don't know. It's balanced. We're going to say red is balanced. It's the most balanced. It's the, it's the best value on here. Best value. I mean, if you got, if you can save up an extra 30 bucks, you know, then look at these two. But also if you're just looking for the best, most well-balanced speaker on the table, that is remarkable in its unremarkable nature of doing something ex something maybe exciting this is the guy for you he's like the guy in high school that you resented because he or the girl because they did everything right and they were even nice they were good good people that got great grades were great in sports and went to a good college okay zen speaker kef q150 not the most well balanced not the most accurate speaker on here but there's some magic in I like butter on my speakers. I wouldn't recommend doing that literally. Um, you can if you want. I mean, but you might mess things up a bit. 
The calf is a little bit of magic. However, it's also the most expensive at $300. And it better stay at $300 because at $600 or $500 or $400, no. It's great at $300. It's outstanding. It's exceptional. All of these are exceptional. All of them are. And again, as I said before, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. It's just important that you know the differences. Okay? So, I appreciate you being here. If you like my attitude, delivery, style, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. We have over a thousand subscribers now, and that's absolutely incredibly humbling to me. So, with that, have a, a great day, and um, maybe think about doing some speaker shopping. Nothing better than speaker shopping. So with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.